Uh, let's take a look at some graphs of an exponential function, and let's use the base of e. Remember, e is just a number, kind of like pi is a number. Yeah. E is just 2.71 something, I think, mm -hmm. 8 to something. I, I don't even know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. but it's some just a number. Okay. And, and the reason it's so important, kind of like pi is important, mm -hmm. it's called a transcendental number, pi yeah. is transcendental, but it's important because it it is the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of every circle. That's what pi is. Um, so it's an important number to understand. E is an important number because it has to do with it has to do with exponential growth and decay functions and compounding interest and different things like that. So just remember that it's a number bigger than one, and that's important because when you're going to graph these things, do you remember how we graphed? So I've got, let's just graph these three examples, color coding them. Remember that for this one, because because that number, the base, is bigger than 1, mm -hmm. let's make a quick little t-chart here for it. I'm going to go this way. with the, So maybe it's not called a t-chart because it's sideways. But if I plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I like to plug in those values for x. Let's first of all plug in 0. What do I get when I plug in 0? All right, e to the 0 is 1, so you're always going to go through this point right there, unless it's shifted, which we're going to talk about in a second. How about if I plug in 1 for x? What do I get for f of x, or y for y? If I plug in 1 up here, e to the 1 is just e, which is 2.71. So if I plug in 1, it's going to be up there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. If I plug in 2... For x, I get e squared, which is, what's 3 squared? 9. 9. What's 2 squared? 4. 4. So it's somewhere between 4 and 9. So if I plug in 2 for x, it's going to be up here, somewhere up here. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. So I might be a little bit off, but it's going to be somewhere up there. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you plug in negative 1, you're going to get 1 over e because e to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over e to the positive 1. You follow? Mm -hmm. And if you plug in negative 2, you get e to the, you get 1 over e squared, which means when I plug in negative 1, it's going to be a little bit smaller than 1 half, so it's going to be down here. And if I plug in 2, I'm sorry, negative 2, if I plug in negative 2, that number is going to be 1 over whatever that was seven point something or eight point something so it's going to be a small number close to zero what's going to happen as i plug in numbers bigger negative numbers what's going to happen to the value of e to the x it's smaller and smaller right it's going to approach the x-axis and what happens when i plug in bigger numbers it's going to go up exponentially mm -hmm. it's going to rise exponentially and that's why this is called well that's why we use the phrase exponential like to something to be exponential, it's not just doubling or tripling. It's it's multiplying by itself Rapidly. over and over and over again, which is a very rapid increase or decrease. Okay, so that's the that's the um, red graph. Now, what's going to happen with this blue graph here? What's the only difference when I add four to the x value? You remember with transformations of graphs, if you've done that before, if you remember that. What's going to happen is every one of these points is going to be moved over, not not up four. Over. Which way? It's going to be so moved over which way? It's going to moved over be moved over left four. So when I plug in, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just put my values in here. Here's my g of x values right here. When I plug in zero, now I'm going to get e to the 0 plus 4, which is going to be, this is going to be e to the 4th. When I plug in 1, it's e to the 5th. When I plug in 2, it's e to the 6th. This is going to be e to the 3rd. This is going to be e squared. So everything, you'll notice all these points, essentially, just got moved over left. So this point right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, over that point right there is negative 4 comma 1. If you plug in negative 4 right here, you get e to the 0, which is 1. 
So negative 4 comma 1, that's that point. Let me, uh, let me erase this so it doesn't look like that's where the point is because it's not there. And so all of these points are going to be moved. It's just going to, it's going to be sort of parallel to this, but it's going to be moved over left. That's what the blue graph is going to do. Now how about this green graph? If I add 4 to the outside of it, if I add 4 to the to the function itself, that's the function value, e to the x, I'm, I'm, it's like I'm adding it to the y value. So it's going to shift it up 4. So instead of having a horizontal asymptote at 0, it's going to have a horizontal asymptote, 2, 3, 4, up 4, right there. That's where your asymptote's going to be. And so the, your point this point's going to be one up and it's going to go down like this and it's going to go up exponentially like that. Okay, so that's how you graph it. Let's look at a couple examples. Let's try this one. A little, little crazier, a little trickier, but we can do this. This is going to move it how? Up one. The negative the two. Left one. That's going to move it. Nope, not left one. Because you're because you're subtracting two from the uh, from the y value okay. from the outside. Yeah. You understand that? So this negative 2 is going to move it down 2. So my new asymptote is going to be down here. Let's draw in my asymptote. That negative 2 is going to be my asymptote. What is this 1 right here going to do? Adding 1 to the x value is going to do what? It's going to move it left. Left. 1. So the point that would have been right here is actually going to be right here. And then this 3 right here, what it does is it just stretches everything out. That 3 is just going to stretch it. It's not going to stretch this point because, um, remember, that's actually, no, it is going to stretch even that point. So it's going to stretch it. It's going to stretch it by a factor of 3. It's going to stretch it vertically by a factor of 3. That's a little bit of a complicated thing to wrap your head around. In fact, let's just erase that for now. I don't want to complicate this anymore. Let's just leave it like this. So there's my graph and there's my my graph's going to be like this. Let's take a look at one more example. This is tricky because notice how it made the, the x I made the x negative and you remember that flips it. It either reflects it over the x-axis or over the y-axis. And the, way I, and the way I remember it is this. I always look back at my basic graph, which is x squared. I know the x squared graph is a parabola. If I make the x negative in here, if I make the x negative, did I really change this graph, x squared? A negative x squared and positive x squared are both positive x squared, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't change the graph, which means what, I, what must I have done? I must have flipped it over the y-axis because it didn't change the graph for me to square whether I had negative or a positive x squared it was the same thing which means I flipped this graph but it looks the same because I flipped it that's how I remember the general rule so what's the general rule when you make the neg at the x negative it flips it over the y-axis so instead of going this way which is what it would have done it flips it over the y-axis, which means it goes this way. Now that's not all it does, because it also moves where? Up two. It moves up two also. So I'm going to take the whole graph. I'll do this in green now. I'm going to take the whole graph, take the asymptote, move it up, put the graph there, move it up like that. And always a good idea is to plot a couple points and make sure you did it right. What's that point right there? One, two, three. It's zero comma three, right? Let's make sure that zero comma three works in here. If I plug in zero right here, what's e to the negative zero equal to? One. One, and what's one plus two? Three. Three, so that worked. I always check a couple points to make sure I didn't make a mistake somewhere. That's how you graph um, an exponential function with base e using transformations.